Good morning. It's Wednesday, and I thought I would share this uh, this model, this Phoenix model I got from Robert James Models. Uh, came in yesterday from Australia. Um, what can I say about it? It's great. That's what I can say about it. Um, you got the detail really good, really accurate. It's I think it's probably his most detailed model to date in terms of the detail. You know. Because uh, like his uh, Rasanati was excellent, don't get me wrong about that, but you needed to uh, add a lot of the plating and everything. Well, this one, it has it all. You know, even a little interior, uh, as you can see. I'll pull the interior out so you can see it. Yeah, these are the interior parts. Pretty much like the Millennium Falcon, at least they look like it, except for this. You know, it's a three-seater, of course, one in the front and two in the back. So when you see it together, it might remind you of the Millennium Falcon in some ways. Um, they did it out of clear so you can light it, which is great. Um, but he gives you this piece here, which is for the window, but I imagine it's just so you can use it as sort of, if you want to paint it black and not put an interior in it, or use it as sort of a uh, pattern. I might try to do a vacuum form of it. And kind of uh, pour some resin around it, you know, on the outside here. Uh, and um, to make a, oh, a resin piece so I can do vacuum form. So a uh, U-shaped vacuum form. If I try vacuum form, this will just collapse it, so I'll have to uh, back it up. I'd rather do a vacuum form this way because it comes up much clearer than pulling over. No matter how hard and how clean you get it, it always has a little bit of you know, roughness to it. And the engines, which as you see, he made hollow, so you can light it and everything. You put little hinges on here. Um, over here, you know, sorry, over here you have like the little front dome pieces and whatnot. And you plan, set it up to where you can use, it looks like three millimeter um, LEDs. So, so what I'm going to do is buy just some blinking three millimeter LEDs. They'll all blink at their own. They won't be set up to a pattern to spin or anything like that. They'll just kind of blink all over the place. Because the blinkers, when you just set them up they might start off at first blinking at the same time and that they some are a little slower and faster and they end up becoming very random looking you know. and you got here are the uh the the parts for the uh, engines to you know the the arms <laughs> lost my train of thought yeah. yeah he's got a set that can fold up i guess into the ship but then it'll be real hard to run the wiring and then you have these permanently open ones which is what i'm going to use they're even pre-drilled you know uh, so you can run wire in there, and some people say they might have trouble running wire, but I use that ribbon wire because you only need, you know, two, you know, a positive and a gr ground, and that should fit through there, I believe. I'll test it. Anyways, if I have to drill it with a bit, I will. You know, of course, the the rear uh, nacelle and the domes. He set these up so you can drill one, and I do believe those are blue in there, if I remember right, from some of the pictures he has. And, of uh, shots, you know, uh, frame grabs. And of course, these are white in here. Uh, this thing here, which I, at first I couldn't figure out what it was, but it's actually to glue all these little pieces on. You know, there are six of these and three of these and six of those. Uh, so, um, in the detail, you know, how close I can get to with the camera, because this thing doesn't focus really well. But it's all dead on. He really got it really good. I think he consulted me on one thing, and that was this piece here. And the only little advice I could give him was to maybe make these a little taller. Uh, but other than that, that's that's it. You know, that's all you need. So um, I'm glad he he uh, felt, uh, feel honored that he contacted me to even ask me questions about that. So guess because I'm an old timer, I've been doing this stuff for such a long time. Yeah, part of the engine, obviously, and the engine bell, very nice as you can see. Um, I remember. In here, that would be the only part I'm going to change. I'm not going to change a thing. I'm just going to build it like it is. You know, build it, throw some lights in it, put it on, make a little stand for it, and call it a day. Um, there was a piece in here that was a bit bigger and came out a little farther, and had a screen in it, like a, you know, uh, kind of like the screen pattern that you see on the uh, spindrift, you know, you know, honeycomb pot pattern that they stuck in there. Which is that's all they put is a piece of metal screen in the miniature, and then a ring. And it just so happens that when I did my ET ship, I made some of those for the uh, out, outriding engines that come out. 
they have those little perforated screens, screens up in the engines there. So I even, even have a mold for it. You might even have some cast up, I only need one. And um, yeah, that's the only thing I, I've changed. This is a little clear piece, you know, so you can light that engine too. I, I'm probably not gonna light that engine because you know, when, when uh, the only time they need it is when they're getting out of Earth's orbit. So if you're going to have it closed up, sure, have it lit. But when the uh, nacelles are out, the engine wasn't lit anymore because it wasn't being used. So, um, yeah, so I think I showed you this already. Yeah, terrific. Yeah, you really got it now. So that's my, uh, put that back in here. That's my review on the uh, Robert James 3D printed uh, Phoenix. It is definitely worth getting. I can say that much. Uh, so I hope you get it. And I'm seeing a lot of them built. People are building them giant. This is kind of the preferred size he made it to be, which puts it about 15 inches, 16 inches long, which is plenty big enough for me. You know, it's a small ship, so I don't mind having a smaller model. I don't need a five-foot model of this. <laughs> the studio scale one, I think, was about four foot long. If I remember, I remember seeing it up close. If I remember right, it was about four foot. I could be wrong. It was a long time ago. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, I guess that's it for now, and hope you like this short little review.